The Six Hundred and Thirteen Commandments, Part Fifteen. This Bible study will examine a sample of Torah commandments to see how they would apply to Christians today. We will be using a list of six hundred and thirteen commandments developed by Maimonides and other rabbis as we study the original context of these laws in ancient Israel and consider their connection to the New Testament. We will also correct certain Jewish misinterpretations along the way. In this video, we will cover Deuteronomy chapter seven verse three through Deuteronomy chapter twelve verse thirty-two. You can find the six hundred and thirteen commandments summary PDF file at the Didactic Ministries website. Commandment four hundred and twenty-six: Don't marry outside the faith. Deuteronomy chapter seven verse three says, "You shall not intermarry with them." That is, with the Canaanites. Giving your daughters to their sons, or taking their daughters for your sons. This is a general moral principle that is taught throughout the Old and New Testament. Believers must always marry within the faith. In Exodus chapter thirty-four, verse sixteen, Moses warned the children of Israel not to take of their daughters, that is, the Canaanite daughters, for your sons, and their daughters whore after their gods, and make your sons. Poor after their gods. In First Corinthians chapter seven verse thirty-nine, the apostle Paul wrote, "A woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes. But he must belong to the Lord." Commandment four hundred and twenty-seven: Destroy all Canaanite idols. Deuteronomy chapter seven verse twenty-five says. The carved images of their gods, that is, the Canaanite gods, you shall burn with fire. You shall not covet the silver or the gold that is on them, or take it for yourselves, lest you be ensnared by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. This is a civil commandment that applied to the Israelite army, and an example for Gentile nations to emulate. God hates idolatry so much that the Israelites weren't even allowed to take the gold and silver from the idols for themselves. The Apostle Paul taught Christians to follow this Torah commandment as well. In Romans chapter two, verse twenty-two, he asked, "You who abhor idols, do you rob temples?" This is a rhetorical question. The Apostle Paul implied that the answer is no. Of course. Christians should not rob temples. Believers shouldn't profit from the buying or selling of anything related to idolatry, and should carefully avoid anything associated with paganism, such as Christmas, New Year's Day, Valentine's Day, Easter, May Day, Halloween, and other pagan festivals or superstitious traditions. In First Corinthians chapter ten, verse fourteen. The apostle Paul said, "Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry." Also, in Ephesians chapter five, verse eleven, Paul wrote, "Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them." Commandment four hundred and twenty-eight: Don't bring an idol into your house. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse twenty-six says, "And you shall not bring an abominable thing." That is a Canaanite idol into your house and become devoted to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest and abhor it, for it is devoted to destruction. This is a general moral command that applied to Israelites and resident aliens alike. Believers shouldn't allow any abomination to come into their homes and should avoid anything associated with paganism or idolatry, such as. Christmas, New Year's Day, Valentine's Day, Easter, May Day, Halloween, and other pagan festivals or superstitious traditions. This is consistent with what the Apostle Paul taught in First Corinthians chapter ten, verse fourteen, and Ephesians chapter five, verse eleven. Commandment four hundred and twenty-nine: Thank God for His blessings. In Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse ten. Moses wrote, "When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God 
for the good land he has given you. This is a general moral command that is taught throughout the Old and New Testament. Israel was to give thanks for the promised land, but all believers should express gratitude to God for the many blessings that he provides. Notice in Matthew chapter 15, verse 36, he, that is Jesus, took the seven loaves and the fish, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. Also in Luke chapter 24, verse 30, when he, that is Jesus, was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Finally, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, Paul wrote, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Commandment 430, Love the foreigners living among you. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19 says, And you are to love those who are foreigners, for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. This is a moral command for the Israelites living in the promised land, and it serves as an example for Gentile nations to emulate. It is a specific application of the golden rule. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, Jesus taught his disciples, Do unto others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the Law and the Prophets. All human beings are children of Adam and Eve, so we should treat each other as if we are family. Commandment 431, Respect the Lord your God. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 20 says, You shall fear the Lord your God. This is a general moral command that is taught throughout the Old and New Testament. The Hebrew term for fear is yare, which means to be afraid, to be in awe, to reverence and honor. Everyone should have awe and respect for God, but those who obey God never need to fear him. In Leviticus chapter 10, verse 3, we read, Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I will be treated as holy, and before all the people I will be honored. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, the Apostle John wrote, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. So yare in this commandment means to have awe and respect, reverence and honor for the Lord our God. Commandment 432. Serve the Lord your God. Again, Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 20 says, You shall serve him, that is, serve God. This is a general moral command that is taught throughout the Old and New Testament. The Hebrew term to serve is avad, which means to do work, to work for someone, or to serve a king as his subjects. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says, For you have been bought for a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Also, in Romans chapter 6, verse 13, the Apostle Paul wrote, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. So the principle that is found in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 20, is that we should work for God as if he is our employer. We should serve him because we are subjects of the king of the universe. Commandment 433, hold fast to the Lord your God. Again, in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 20, you shall serve him and hold fast to him, that is, hold fast to God. This is a general moral command that appears throughout the Old and New Testament. In John chapter 15, verse 4, Jesus said to his disciples, Abide in me, 
and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. By abiding here, Jesus means to hold fast to him. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 28, the Apostle John wrote, And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ, so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Again, John is emphasizing this principle of being in fellowship with Christ, holding fast to him. Commandment 434, swear by the Lord your God. Again, in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 20, you shall serve him and hold fast to him, and by his name you shall swear. This is a general moral law that appears throughout the Old and New Testament. No one is required to swear a vow, but if someone does, he must swear by God's name and not the name of the false gods of the pagan nations. However, Jesus encouraged his disciples not to swear any vows or oaths. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 34, Jesus told his disciples during the Sermon on the Mount, But I say to you, do not take an oath at all. Also in James chapter 5, verse 12, But above all, my brethren, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but your yes is to be yes, and your no, no, so that you may not fall under judgment. Commandment 435, Destroy All Canaanite Worship Sites Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2 says, You shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations whom you shall dispossess served their gods, on the high mountains and on the hills, and under every green tree. You shall tear down their altars, and dash in pieces their pillars, and burn their asherim in the fire. You shall chop down the carved images of their gods, and destroy their name out of that place. This is a civil command that applied to Israel's leaders. The army was to destroy all Canaanite shrines or temples when they conquered the promised land. At first, Israel fell into apostasy and disobeyed God. Eventually, they repented and fulfilled this command. Believers today should also rid themselves of anything associated with paganism or the occult. Notice this example in Acts chapter 19, verse 18. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. Verse 19, a number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. Here we see Christians zealously repenting of their former conduct. When they became believers, they rid themselves of everything associated with paganism or the occult. Commandment 436, don't worship God using pagan practices. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 4 says, You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way, that is, according to the way of the Canaanites, who were pagans. This is a general moral command that is taught throughout the Old and New Testament. God expects everyone to worship Him the way that He commands, not as we would choose. Notice what Moses further wrote in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 29. When the Lord your God goes ahead of you and destroys the nations, and you drive them out and live in their land, do not fall into the trap of following their customs and worshiping their gods. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, How do these nations worship their gods? I want to follow their example. You must not worship the Lord your God the way the other nations worship their gods, for they perform for their gods every detestable act that the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters as sacrifices to their gods. Commandment 437, bring all your sacrifices 
to God's sanctuary. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 5 says, But you shall seek the place that the Lord your God will choose out of all your tribes to put his name and make his habitation there. There you shall go, and there you shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the contribution that you present, your vow offerings, your free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herd and of your flock. This is a general moral command that applied to Israelites and resident aliens alike, but is currently in abeyance because there is no temple in existence today. Commandment 438, don't sacrifice outside of God's sanctuary. Commandment 439, sacrifice only at God's sanctuary. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 13 says, Take care that you do not offer your burnt offerings at any place that you see, but at the place that the Lord will choose in one of your tribes, there you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I am commanding you. This is a general moral command that applied to Israelites and resident aliens alike, but is currently in abeyance because there is no temple in existence today. There is only one place where people should bring their sacrifices, that is, to the city of Jerusalem and to the sanctuary that was established there. Commandment 440, common animals can be eaten anywhere. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 15 says, However, you may slaughter and eat meat within any of your towns, as much as you desire, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. The unclean person and the clean person may eat of it, as of the gazelle and as of the deer. This is a general moral command that applied to Israelites and resident aliens alike. If an animal was not holy, that is, set apart for sacrifice, it could be butchered and eaten anywhere by any one. Sacred animals, however, had to be sacrificed at God's sanctuary, and a person had to be ritually clean in order to eat it. Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 21 explains, But if an animal has any blemish, if it is lame or blind, or has any serious blemish whatever, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. You shall eat it within your towns. The unclean person and the clean person alike may eat it, as though it were a gazelle or a deer. And so, any animal that was dedicated for sacrifice had to be brought to the Lord's sanctuary and offered as a sacrifice there. Other animals that were from the herd or the flock could be butchered and eaten in the towns and cities where they lived at any time. No one had to be ritually clean in order to eat this meat. Commandment 441 don't eat second tithe grain within your town. Commandment 442, don't drink second tithe wine within your town. Commandment 443, don't consume second tithe oil within your town. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 17 says, You may not eat within your towns the tithe of your grain or of your wine or of your oil, or the firstborn of your herd, or of your flock, or any of your vow offerings that you vow, or your free will offerings, or the contribution that you present. This is a general moral command for all believers. God set apart the first tithe to be given to the Levites as their pay to provide for their ministry. God also commanded the Israelites to set apart a second tithe that was to be used for the celebration of his annual festivals. During the millennium, God will require everyone to keep his feast days, so it is logical to conclude that everyone will keep the law of the second tithe to be able to go to Jerusalem and celebrate with God's people there. Notice what is written in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. Then the survivors from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year, to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Festival of Tabernacles. So the principle in this passage is clear. All believers should set aside a festival tithe now 
so that they can afford to travel to Israel to go to Jerusalem and observe God's annual festivals in the city where God has placed his name. Commandment 444, don't eat a firstborn calf within your town. Commandment 445, don't eat a firstborn lamb within your town. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 17 says, You may not eat within your towns the tithe of your grain, or of your wine, or of your oil, or the firstborn of your herd or of your flock. This is a religious command that applied to the priests who are the sons of Aaron. This command is currently in abeyance because there is no temple in existence in Israel. God required the Israelites to give every firstborn male clean animal to the priests who would sacrifice them and eat the meat. Notice what is written in Numbers chapter 18, verse 17. But the firstborn of a cow, or the firstborn of a sheep, or the firstborn of a goat, you shall not redeem. They are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood on the altar and shall burn their fat as a food offering, with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. But their flesh shall be yours, as the breast that is waved, and as the right thigh are yours, that is, for the priests. So the priests, who are the sons of Aaron, got to eat the meat of the firstborn animals as their payment for their ministry to the children of Israel. Commandment 446. Don't eat a vow offering within your town. Commandment 447. Don't eat a free will offering within your town. Commandment 448, don't eat a peace offering within your town. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 17 says, You may not eat within your towns the tithe of your grain, or of your wine, or of your oil, or the firstborn of your herd, or of your flock, or any of your vow offerings that you vow, or your freewill offerings, or the contribution that you present. This is a general moral command that applied to Israelites and resident aliens alike, but is currently in abeyance because there is no temple in existence today. God's people must bring their sacrifices to one altar, to the place where God has chosen to put his name, and that is in the city of Jerusalem. Numbers chapter 15 verse 14 makes clear that the Israelites and resident aliens were required to follow the same regulations for sacrifices. And so, the vow offerings, free will offerings, and contributions were to be offered at God's sanctuary in the place where he would put his name. The Hebrew term for contribution in this passage is terumah, which is associated with the peace offering. This was a free will offering that worshipers got to eat. In other words, they would take it to Jerusalem, offer it as a sacrifice, the fat would be burned on the altar, and the worshiper would get to eat the meat. It was a fellowship offering between the worshiper and God. It was like sharing a meal with Yahweh, the God of Israel. Commandment 449, don't neglect the Levite. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 19 says, Take care that you do not neglect the Levite as long as you live in your land. This commandment applies to the Israelites living in the promised land, but it also serves as an example for all believers to emulate. The Bible clearly teaches that those who minister full-time have a right to financial support from the people. Numbers chapter 18 verse 21 says, To the sons of Levi, behold, I have given all the tithe in Israel for an inheritance, in return for their service which they perform, the service of the tent of meeting. This principle is repeated in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, where the Apostle Paul wrote, If we sowed spiritual things in you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? In verse 14, Paul says, So also the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. Commandment 450, common animals can be butchered anywhere. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 20 says, 
When the Lord your God enlarges your territory, as he has promised you, and you say, I will eat meat because you crave meat, you may eat meat whenever you desire. If the place that the Lord your God will choose to put his name is too far from you, then you may kill any of your herd or your flock, which the Lord has given you, as I have commanded you, and you may eat within your towns whenever you desire. This commandment applied to Israelites and resident aliens alike. Animals that were dedicated to God had to be sacrificed at God's sanctuary, and a person had to be ritually clean in order to eat the meat of that animal. However, if an animal was not holy, that is, if it was not set apart for worship, it could be butchered and eaten by anyone anywhere throughout the land of Israel. And a person didn't need to be ritually clean in order to eat it. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 15, Moses said, However, you may slaughter and eat meat within any of your towns. Commandment 451, drain the blood when butchering an animal. Deuteronomy 12, verse 23 says, Only be sure that you do not eat the blood, for the blood is the life, and you shall not eat the life with the flesh. You shall not eat it. You shall pour it out on the ground like water. This is a universal moral command that is taught throughout the Old and New Testament. It applies to everyone, everywhere, all the time. God gave this law to Noah after the flood, and the apostles taught Gentile Christians to observe it. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 4, God commanded Noah and his sons, saying, But you must not eat meat with its life blood still in it. In Acts chapter 15, verse 20, we read, But instead, we, the apostles, should write and tell them, that is, the Gentile Christians who were turning to the Lord, to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. So here we see in the New Testament that the apostles commanded Gentile believers not to eat meat with the blood still in it. They were following Torah principles laid down in the book of Genesis and the book of Deuteronomy. Commandment 452, bring all your sacrifices to God's sanctuary. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 26 says, But the holy things that are due from you and your vow offerings you shall take, and you shall go to the place that the Lord will choose, and offer your burnt offerings, the flesh and the blood, on the altar of the Lord your God. The blood of your sacrifices shall be poured out on the altar of the Lord your God, but the flesh you may eat. This command applied to Israelites and resident aliens alike, but is currently in abeyance. God's people must bring their sacrifices to one altar, to the place where the Lord has chosen to put his name, that is, in the city of Jerusalem. Numbers chapter 15 verse 14 says, If an alien sojourns with you and wishes to make an offering by fire as a soothing aroma to the Lord, just as you do, so shall he do. So Israelites and Gentiles were to follow the same regulations with respect to sacrifices and offerings. Commandment 453, don't add anything to the Torah. Commandment 454, don't delete anything from the Torah. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 32 says, Everything that I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it or take from it. This is a universal moral command that is taught throughout the Old and New Testament. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus told his disciples, Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments, that is, Torah commandments, and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Also, in Mark chapter 7, verse 7, Jesus said, In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. In these two passages, Jesus called upon his disciples 
to obey God's law as revealed in the Torah and not to add commandments of men to his law, as the Pharisees and the scribes had done.